Welcome to Global RPH on YouTube, where cutting-edge clinical expertise meets evidence-based medical education. Subscribe to stay informed and enhance your clinical decision-making. Introduction. Stroke remains a major public health concern in the United States, impacting approximately 795,000 individuals each year. However, Recent advancements in stroke management technologies are reshaping the clinical landscape and significantly improving patient outcomes. The FDA-approved Vivistim Paired VNS system, recognized in Time's 2023 Best Inventions list, represents a breakthrough for patients six months to over 20 years post-stroke. Patients using this system generate two to three times more hand and arm function when combined with rehabilitation therapy compared to standard therapy alone. New stroke treatments work beyond conventional timeframes, offering hope where few options were previously available. Endovascular thrombectomy can now be performed more than six hours after stroke onset, dramatically reducing the risk of severe disability. Furthermore, promising experimental treatments targeting the P2X4 receptor have received over $2 million in renewed NIH funding to advance research. Additionally, multipotent stem cell therapy has shown notable improvements in neurological function, with patients showing an average increase of 11.4 points on the Fugel, Meyer assessment. These new treatments for stroke patients collectively represent an unprecedented expansion of therapeutic options for healthcare providers and the patients they serve. Device-based therapies for stroke recovery. Recent innovations in neurostimulation technology represent a major milestone in stroke rehabilitation approaches. The FDA has approved several device-based therapies that harness neuroplasticity to enhance therapy beyond what traditional rehabilitation alone can achieve. Vivistim Paired VNS System – How It Works The Vivistim Paired VNS System consists of a subpectoral implantable pulse generator linked by a cervical lead to cuff electrodes on the left vagus nerve. During therapist-guided motor practice, the device delivers millisecond-timed, low-amplitude pulses that patients rarely perceive. Pairing stimulation with purposeful upper limb movement triggers acetylcholine, norepinephrine, and serotonin release, boosting neuroplasticity and establishing alternate cortical spinal pathways around infarcted tissue. Who benefits? Ideal candidates are greater than or equal to six months post-ischemic stroke, exhibit moderate severe arm deficits, yet retain voluntary wrist plus two finger motion and have plateaued on standard therapy. Key data. Nearly half of treated subjects achieved greater than or equal to six point gains at 90 days, double the control rate. Some high volume sites report mean improvements exceeding 10 points after the initial six week course. Rehabilitation protocol. Patients complete 18 outpatient sessions, three times per week for a total of 90 minutes. Each visit involves 300 to 400 task-specific repetitions, gross reach, grasp and release, object manipulation, container handling, and simulated feeding, while therapists trigger stimulation wirelessly. After discharge, a magnet allows 30-minute daily home sessions integrated into routine activities. Long-term follow-up shows sustained or progressive gains for at least three years. Pharmacologic Horizon Parallel drug programs aim to widen the ischemic stroke treatment window by modulating complementary neural pathways, with several agents now in late-phase trials. Together with paired VNS, these innovations promise further reductions in post-stroke disability. P2X4 inhibition in post-stroke. Neuroinflammation, microglia, and macrophages upregulate P2X4 receptors in response to ATP released by dying neurons, fueling a harmful inflammatory cascade. Small molecule inhibitors like 5-BDBD cross the blood-brain barrier, block P2X4, and curb tissue expansion. By tempering overactivated myeloid responses, these drugs also enhance macrophage phagocytosis, the cleanup crew, whose brisk debris removal underpins long-term functional gains. Stretching the acute window. Where traditional TPA was limited to a three to 4.5 hour window, tenecteplase, TN case, can be given as a single five second IV bolus matching Altaplace's efficacy in the ACTI trial while greatly simplifying administration. 
Likewise, in the CHARM study, IV glyburide, Sirara, slashed mortality from 31% to 5.6% and doubled the proportion of large hemispheric stroke survivors walking independently at 90 days. Preclinical Promise and FDA Pathway NIH awarded Yukon over $2 million to advance their P2X4 antagonist, which not only shrinks infarcts in rodents, but also improves motor coordination, reduces anxiety-like behavior, and dampens neuroinflammation. On the regulatory front, Sanbexin, Idaravon plus Dexborneol, earned breakthrough therapy status after Taste SL showed a 64.4% versus 54.7% benefit, and Serrara's impressive odds ratio, 8.19 in thrombectomy patients positions it for possible rapid approval. Stem cell therapy and stroke rehabilitation. Regenerative promise of MSCs, mesenchymal stem cells, MSCs, mark a shift from symptom control to genuine tissue repair. These multipotent cells, harvested from bone marrow, adipose tissue, or umbilical cord, can differentiate into neuron-like cells. Yet their true power lies in paracrine signaling. MSCs secrete trophic factors and extracellular vesicles that quell inflammation, inhibit apoptosis, promote angiogenesis, and spur neurogenesis. Genetic modification, for example, BDNF-enhanced MSCs, further boosts local growth factor levels during critical post-stroke windows. Clinical evidence and safety. Early phase studies report functional gains after intracerebral or intravenous MSC delivery in chronic and subacute stroke patients. A meta-analysis of 18 randomized trials found consistent improvements in Barthel Index, modified Rankine Scale, and Fugelmeyer scores, along with reduced infarct volumes. Adverse events are generally mild, fever, headache, fatigue, though rare complications, seizures, infections, nausea, have been noted. Practical hurdles, key questions linger. Timing, some data favor ultra-early administration, less than 48 hours, while others show benefit even months later. Route, intracerebral injection maximizes cell homing but is invasive. IV infusion is simpler yet less targeted. Standardization, MSC potency varies by source and donor age, complicating manufacturing and dosing protocols. Positioning among stroke therapies, Unlike thrombolytics, such as tenecteplase bolus within hours, or device platforms, e.g. Vivistim's paired VNS in chronic phases, MSCs act over weeks to months, rebuilding neural networks via multiple pathways. Expanded imaging windows now allow acute interventions up to 24 hours post-stroke. MSCs offer flexibility, with subacute IV delivery or chronic intracerebral approaches both under study toward multimodal care. The future lies in smart combinations, rapid clot busting, mechanical thrombectomy, then regenerative support. Emerging smart trials will refine sequencing, perhaps acute TN case and thrombectomy, followed by MSC infusion to cement gains. Coordinated stroke systems are already adapting, integrating advanced imaging and therapy algorithms to tailor these complementary tools for each patient. Conclusion. Stroke treatment has evolved dramatically toward a more personalized, multimodal approach. Throughout this discussion, we have examined three groundbreaking therapeutic categories that offer unprecedented options for patients at various stages post-stroke. Device-based interventions like the Vivistim system have revealed remarkable results for chronic stroke patients, with success rates double those of conventional therapy alone. Meanwhile, pharmaceutical innovations have extended treatment windows beyond traditional limits. Tenecteplase, administered as a single bolus, now provides faster delivery than previous standards of care. Stem cell therapies, although still emerging, present perhaps the most fundamental shift in stroke rehabilitation paradigms. These treatments target underlying tissue damage rather than merely managing symptoms. Clinical trials reveal encouraging outcomes, with patients showing an average increase of 11.4 points on the Fugelmeyer assessment after MSC administration. Nevertheless, challenges remain. Researchers continue working towards standardization of cell therapy protocols, optimization of delivery methods, and precise timing parameters. Despite these obstacles, the combined use of these treatments offers particularly compelling possibilities. 
Patients who receive sequential therapies, acute intervention followed by rehabilitative technologies, and potentially regenerative approaches, show substantially better outcomes than those receiving single modalities. Therefore, as we look toward the future of stroke care, healthcare professionals must consider the unique advantages of each approach while recognizing their complementary potential. The expanded therapeutic window now available for many patients represents a fundamental transformation in stroke treatment. Previously, millions faced limited therapy options beyond the acute phase. Now, effective interventions exist from the hyperacute period through chronic stages. This comprehensive approach undoubtedly gives stroke survivors the second chance they deserve. Thank you for watching this Global RPH presentation. If you found the content valuable, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. Your support helps us continue delivering high-quality, evidence-based medical content tailored to healthcare professionals like you. We have more in-depth topics and clinical insights coming soon, so stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.